guys. It's Beard Mike here. Almost forgot my glasses. Now there are two types of people in this. We sh Accidents happen sometimes, but we gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah we do. Now there are two types of people in this world. You got good people and you got bad people. And the bad people, well, well they use photo reference. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. All right, so, come on. You know what? I'm not even gonna talk about it, because when I talk about it, you don't even listen to me. Don't you act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I say it all the time. Don't you dare take photo reference. You take video. You take video reference. You have to take video reference, and that's what we're gonna be breaking down today. I'm gonna be looking at your submissions. This artist did so well with the reference. It's dynamic. All right, so pay attention to this leg. You see this, uh, this knee here? This motion is following the motion of this person right here, the, the back of the thigh. This motion's coming through here, which is also creating this taper of this person's shoulders. This guy's arm is going back this way, and this is also following this overall body arc, arch of this uh, this back character. That's the dynamic of video reference. You can't get that in photo reference. Photo references say cheese. Oh, uh, let's, let's kind of pose here and say cheese. We're fighting, right? Yeah, they're fighting. No, you get into the action, you get into your character design, your character mentality. Okay, so that versus this. This is probably what most people think of when they hear take photo reference or reference for your, uh, for your pose. You took these same poses, but then you move the camera and you put the characters in a different position. So right here, your video reference focus was perfect, but you didn't break down the poses. You can still do this angle that you have right here. You can still do that, but just make sure you take your photo reference from the side like that, as opposed to this video reference here, which is really good. You've got the character's hand, the attack, coming into the foreground of the camera. That's really cool dynamic. Both of your acting is on point. It's nice. That's what I want to see. So if you do this, if you break down these poses like this and use your camera, use your phone as an extension of your personality, or do I want to put the camera down here? Do I want to put the camera up here? What's more of in my flavor? That's what's going to make you stand out from all the other Instagram artists that are doing the same flat shots, the same old thing over and over again. You're going to stand out. Use your camera as an extension of your little baby brain. By the way, using the Artist 12 Pro XP pin. All right, you've already seen the uh, unpackaging videos before where they're all like, well, this is the XP pin and you've got this little dial here and these buttons and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna do that. You go watch those videos if you wanna figure out how to do all the stupid settings. I'm gonna be reviewing using this in actuality, actually using this to go over people's work. So I'm not gonna uh, BS you. I'm not gonna waste your time. Oh. <sighs> Comes with a little stand, all right? I actually really like that. Also, at the end of the video, I'll be doing another drawing challenge, and I'm gonna be giving this sucker away to the winner of that drawing challenge. Tell all your friends, tell your family, and I'll be shipping this sucker off to somebody within the United States. I am very sorry about that, but that's the only thing that I can do right now. Boom! So the point of this drawing challenge was to pose with a person to kind of get a feeling of that space and actuality. All right, this person did a really good job. Nice and Swedish. Oh, yeah, no, uh, Finnish. That's finished, right? All right, this is pretty much what I'm talking about, but this person didn't go full force, so it's going to come across as not full force in the photo, uh, in the video reference. That's why this is so important to get down. It's all about getting the nuances of the pose. The shot doesn't look like a full force kick. It looks like a kick that's pushing this person away. I really like the pose, it looks good, but it doesn't look like a, an actual assault, an attack, like a moving thing. And it's because it wasn't in the, in the uh, reference. And then this guy did a pose with a guitar, which is still cool, because it's an interaction with an object. All right, this one, I just wanted to point out that I feel like the action was actually pretty dynamic in this shot. It, it feels like there's movement in it. Good job on that one. This is a photograph. I can tell they said, ready, set, say cheese. And everybody got in their positions. They took the pose. All right, I'm going to do a back kick and you're going to be like, ugh. You can look at it and you can tell this guy's not actually flying backwards. And I know it's so difficult for me to just tell you this all comes down to the nuances of actually acting like a professional actor. But maybe it's just up to you to go through film footage or MMA footage and pick out those poses, those authentic poses of action. All right, this one's cool. I like this expression. The more you can do that, the more your art's gonna stand out as an individual. So your pose is good and authentic. 
Okay, the compound bow that you're using, this is the type of pull that you'll be doing with those bows. But I just wanna make sure that actuality, truth in animation, truth in storytelling doesn't always mean it's the best choice. You don't want it to look like it's just the easiest thing to pull back. So this one, I feel like there's power in this weapon because I can see the strain in his arm holding it and I can really see the strain on his fingers. Whenever I see people use bows in comics or in animation, it always frustrates me so much because it looks like it's like a 10 pound bow that they're using. It's just so, so simple to pull back. It feels like them shooting this bow isn't going to have any weight to it. It's just like, dunk. Maybe study Miyazaki, Princess Mononoke. He really pulls back that bow. Does it really apply to this one though? Because I think you're just doing a character design, which is really good. You did good with the character design. So might not apply here. Just a eh, future thought. Here's a good one. If you're doing an emotional comic or animation, anything, you best be acting. And when I mean acting, I mean your little face and your little eyes and these. Maybe that's what people are looking at. They're looking at your eyes and they're looking at your hands. Hands is big, big, big part in acting. People look at the eyes and they go right back down to the hands. Two most important things. I think you do perfect with the acting here. You got your friend, you're holding your friend, and your friend's dead. Good pose overall. Just make sure you pay attention to those hands. So the first thing I looked at was your hand down here. Check out these hands though. These are some real grief hands. You know, these people are getting real sad. They're spread and they're bent and they're in anguish. What would have been great with this one if you went to hold your friend's clothes and it's scrunching up like that. Oh wait, your friend might not be dead. Uh, it's just a flesh wound. All right, this one's good. Nothing really to say here. Just wanted to uh, show it nice and cool. This one. All right, this one right here. This is a winner, baby. Winner. Winner for structure. Why? Because this structure is so darn nice, so darn clean. All right, this doesn't have to do with the challenge, but I just want to point it out, all right? Straights, straights, boom. St look a little bit of a curve here. Straight, 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 straight. Straight, straight, straight. This artist is doing straights, and then when this artist feels like it, they do a little curve. If you want your art to feel nice and steady, solid, you do straights, and then you can do some curves where you feel like it. So this is cool. Before you ever do a pose, you need to think about, okay, what do I want to do in this pose? Because if you don't know what you're doing in this pose, the audience sure ain't gonna know. Because I don't know what you're doing to this person. You're slinging them around, that's for sure. But to what extent, I don't know. Okay, if it's a funny shot, then you, you one. You won that one. I right, just wanted to show this shot because this person's breaking down this reference right here. And good job. Keep on going. Keep on going. Here we go. All right. I'm so excited about this one. This is what I'm talking about. This is a say cheese moment. I don't want anybody doing this anymore. I want you to set your phone up and I want you to take a video. After you take in the video, you can scroll through, find the shots that you like, and then you take that screen capture of the exact moment that you like, that it shows the most action within that shot. Again, I know it's tough because both of you aren't professional actors. What I suggest of doing is setting a phone up, putting up the video and just going through different takes. Like, all right, now let's just keep on trying to like fight each other. You swing at me and I'll swing at you and I'll block. Maybe take a few minutes and try to really get into it because once you forget the cameras there, once you are having fun and once you're actually trying to hit somebody, that's, that's a big one. If you're actually trying to hit somebody and you're actually trying to block somebody, that's gonna be where you get the authenticity of the shot. Their hips are gonna be different their shoulders are going to be different. Their feet are going to be placed different. Their knees are going to be bent in a certain way. Oh, and here's another thing too. Just because you get photo reference off the internet, it doesn't mean it's a good thing to study. Maybe if you're wanting to go in and study anatomy or whatnot, but we're talking about getting an authentic pose here. We're looking for something like that. She's about to whack that dude over the head. All right, this one's in here because I just thought it was cute and I thought the execution was really done well. All right, this one's looking pretty cool. I like it. Just always watch out for the tangents though. Watch out for these tangents right here. This hand is doing something. This hand is doing something in, in response to this hand. That's what I'm looking for, that character interaction. All right, so this guy is pointing at this hand and this hand is in the trunk of a car and both of them are arguing about something. I really love this video. Check out this guy's video, it cracks me up. I don't know why. <laughs> So hot, so hot, I'm surprised the fire alarm doesn't go off. Look at that thing.
Cool shot. I love that guy. Moving on. All right, I like this shot. Again, with the hands, though. Whenever you think of a stressful situation, if there's a rope tied around your neck, you are grabbing it and you are trying to pull it off. Even if your photo reference has this hand pose in it, you need to go through and take a picture of your own hand and try to figure out this what an actual photo referenced stressed hand looks like. Nothing to say about this one. It's just cool. I like the pose. Very artsy. Good job on the uh, execution of the drawing, but the photo reference is, well, I mean, I guess it's working. You've definitely got character interaction, and I guess it does have movement. This is a really interesting shot. Not a lot of people are gonna have shots like this. This person's definitely the winner of storytelling. Nothing wrong with this one, really. I just wanted to point out that this person did a study and then did the cleanup uh, away from the study. So that's really, uh, that's really cool. This is really cool because I like the authenticity of this pose. It feels very realistic. That's the authenticity that I'm looking for. And in response to him grabbing her neck, her hands are responding to his hands. All right, keep that up. Here's a final point. You don't have to study from video reference all the time. It can be from animation. It doesn't have to be live action. Dragon Ball Z might not be the best to study sometimes, but if you like it, then that's that's what you study. If you want to replicate Dragon Ball Z, that's what you study. All right, I'm about to show you some secret inside footage of XP Pen Pro uh, drawings. I mean, some of these were drawn on the XP Pen. Some of these were painted on the XP Pen. All right, you got some crazy shots in here. Got a crazy up shot, got a crazy down shot, a little bit of action shot. This uh, crazy, wacky 3D shot that I possibly made or did not make an XP pen. Whoa, look at that crazy thing. Whoa, buddy. All right, and I'm pretty darn inclined to say if I were any other artist, I would personally say that it does not matter. If you use an XP Pen Pro, if you use a Wacom, if you use one of these suckers, if you got the skills, it doesn't matter what you use. I would say that, but <clears throat> what I'm gonna say, the drawings that I did with this tablet are probably a lot better than the ones that I did with the Wacom tablet. All right, but that's just me. Boom! All right, now for the drawing challenge, I basically just want you to do what I've been telling you to do this whole time. I want you to flip and use a, f a video reference. People, come on, please. For this drawing challenge, I want you to set up your phone and put it in an interesting place. Please, don't put it just straight on. I want you to put it a little bit down low, tie it to a curtain rod, and, and put it up somewhere else. Have it hanging, do something. Come on, put the phone in a cool spot. Have a little bit of fun with it. And I want you to tell a story. Somebody handing somebody an envelope. Somebody handing somebody a knife. Somebody stabbing somebody under a table. Somebody holding somebody when they're dying. Somebody holding somebody when they're crying. Storytelling, do something. And if you can, try to let the camera help tell the story. Obviously, don't put the camera too high when you're supposed to be focusing on something that's down low. Do that, then you go on Instagram, look at my post for this video, and you're going to apply through that uh, post. You're gonna say, hey, Ethan, look, I did the reference challenge. And I actually used a video this time. If you can, you don't have to show your face if you don't want to, but it would be really, really cool if you put up your videos next to your drawing, next to your art pieces, especially if they're action shots or something. They're really fun to watch. It would be really cool to actually do a thing where I review the action shots, the actual videos, because those are really fun to look at and they're entertaining. They're funny. Boom! XP pen. Buy it. It's a good gift. Nice and affordable. Uh, look at the prices. B boom! <laughs>